In the 1960s, Buffy St. Marie brought Aboriginal activism to the forefront of international consciousness. Her career, which has always reflected both her own life and that of Aboriginal peoples, has always caused a stir and left an impression in its wake. Folk singers weren't supposed to do that, let alone women folk singers, let alone Indian women folk singers. They're not supposed to do any of that, right? He's going to do some songs with us. Singer, songwriter, artist, teacher, and mother, Buffy St. Marie continues to break boundaries. She went on to write the Oscar-winning song, Up Where We Belong, which became the title track in An Officer and a Gentleman. Buffy continues to fascinate and delight audiences from around the world. Her recent release, Running for the Drum, is proof that she has not run out of steam yet. I'm not the kind of writer who, who uh, does it for work, just hearing songs in my head. And when I have a bunch of them that go good together and I'm crazy about them myself, that's when I put out an album. It's reflective of the whole world and it's also very specifically reflective of stuff that happens to Aboriginal people at home. Lightning woman. She seems to be uh, unintimidated by exploring a variety of areas in the musical realm that are not the typical prescribed, you know, write your song, do an album, do a tour. She, she's tried her hands in different, on different levels of all of that. The life she's lived and the song she's written will uh, speak volumes. There's one song called No No Keshagesh. <laughs> and Keshagesh is a Cree word that means basically greedy guts. So for me, it's a metaphor about uh, environmental greed. Talk about your beautiful, for spacious skies. It's about uranium. It's about the water rights. Got Mother Nature on a luncheon plate. They carve her up and call it real estate. Somebody's trying to save our Mother Earth. I'm going to help them to save it and sing it and say it. Saying, No, no, Keshagesh, you can't do that no more. As a person who travels a lot, I would say I've seen Aboriginal people in Canada um, come forward in just every field. The Aboriginal voice to me is not only a speaking voice or the sound of a singing voice, it is those things, but it's also how individual people from Aboriginal experience um, perceive the world and give, reflect it back. I find a hunger for, for knowledge about good works. I hope you can get beyond our pretty costumes, our colorfulness, our feathers, our paint, and see what it is that we have to offer. In the 1970s, Buffy St. Marie's name made it into the American White House's list of performers that deserved to be suppressed, and during that time, her music was blacklisted in North America. Much of the controversy and questions that arose during that time over the lives of high-profile American Indians like Anne-Marie Quash, Leonard Peltier, John Trudell, and Buffy St. Marie were left a brutal mystery. One time, Annie Mae and I were both uh, ducking bullets in Gresham, Wisconsin, um, when the Menominees were going th through that thing, um, with that mission. Uh, and we were hanging around with a guy named Doug Durham, who turned out to be a plant for the FBI. I had no idea that I was being blacklisted. I had no idea that Lyndon Johnson's FBI was following me around. The Johnson administration was using White House stationery to send out letters to broadcasting stations in the U.S. and Canada, uh, commending them for having suppressed my music, which they said deserved to be suppressed. I had no idea, didn't know anything about it for maybe 12 to 15 years after the fact. It didn't in any way affect our courage to stand up and um, offer our snapshots of Aboriginal life to other people. John Trudell said one thing that uh, I've remembered. There are certain people 
in this world who don't want Indians or anybody else interfering with their complete control of all available lands and natural resources. And that's kind of Indian 101 for me. The white political male population in the United States, you know, were so sure of what kind of reaction you were supposed to have or know or think of that when anybody popped out like that, they were absolutely afraid of it. I mean, here are these people with big bad guys in the world that are afraid of a woman with a guitar. You know, afraid of, you know, some somebody that's gonna say something that's gonna make these people stand up and be more responsible for themselves. And her songs were intelligent, well-crafted, you know, and, and, and she was a stunning performer. For a person to keep their own culture, not only here, but here, you have to really honor that person. Thank you, everybody. Merci beaucoup. I put her amongst top five female artists in, in North America. You have to break through. It isn't like they got the door wide open and saying, hey, all you Indians, come on in. It isn't like that in the real world, you know? So this girl had to stand up and, you know, and break through barriers. And, uh, and I'm very proud that she's, that she's done it. It's just a natural for me to gravitate to many different ways of life. It shows up in my songs, it shows up in my paintings, it shows up in the way I write curriculum. I think part of it, staying positive, is a positive intent. It's really having the courage to admit how much you want to have a great time.